What makes good sperm? This is probably not a question you've ever really given a lot of thought to. We might intuitively think that what makes sperm good is it has the potential to produce a child. However, I'd like to show that actually this is much more complex. In STS, we study the relationships between science, technology, and society, and sperm donation involves all of these. So first of all, why should we care about this? There's actually been relatively little uh, research done on sperm donors, particularly with regard to what it is that they do due to the taboos that surround this topic. At the same time, we're being constantly told that there's a shortage of sperm here in the UK, whereas in Denmark, they actually have waiting lists of hundreds of donors. I went to Denmark to one of the world's largest sperm banks to find out what it is that donors do. They told me that they were proud of having good sperm and that some of them had actually gone to the sperm bank in the first place just to find out whether their sperm was good. This includes donors <laughs> who already had children, which tells us that good sperm means something more than just the obvious empirical evidence. So what does it mean? Measuring the quality of a semen sample involves a number of factors. These include the appearance of the semen itself, the morphology of the sperm cells, and motility, which means the number of sperm cells that are swimming in a sample. Sperm donors have to have a particularly high motility count because of the dilution that happens in the freezing process. But actually, the process of producing good sperm starts a lot earlier and involves social factors. The sperm bank screens out donors who they think are not saleable in terms of ethnicity, height, weight, eye color, hair color, and the amount of personal information they're willing to reveal to their offspring. They also screen out risky donors, which was put to me as, have they had sex with a man in Africa whilst injecting heroin? There's, <laughs> there's also a technological wild card here. Some men simply have sperm that can't be frozen, and nobody knows why this happens. Um, so you can have the most attractive six foot four Danish Viking with brilliant sperm, but if it can't be frozen, it's not good sperm. Once they've been accepted as donors, they also have to maintain this level of good sperm, which they do through abstaining from sex for two days before each donation. And many of them also cut out caffeine and junk food. Why do they do this? Well, the sperm bank pays them more if their sperm is higher quality. And they also charge consumers more for higher quality sperm. So as we've seen, there are a lot of factors involved in producing good sperm. But when you get right down to it, it often seems to be about money. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.